Hello, my friends. How are you? Well, happy birthday, America, this weekend. This is my 4th of July message, and it's not very optimistic, I must say. It has been an amazing two weeks that we have experienced in what, I, to me, in all my lifetime, was one of the most horrendous court decisions ever rendered. Did ending 50 years of equality, setting a tone that anything is no longer sacredly under the Constitution, that anybody can change it politically, uh, making women of this country total second-class citizens. It is mean, it is cruel, and it's deadly. And on top of that, we find out how close, how very close we came to a coup d'etat on January 6th. It's frightening, and it's frightening the fact that so many people still hold the belief it was justified and that Trump did win the election. Now, this brings us to the issue of what can we do? And there's a lot of people in despair. But, you know, in the absence of hope, we must replace it with action and create hope. We have no choice. It's, it's the courageous decision. The first thing we have to do is vote, 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 November 6th. We have to put all the differences we have in the Democratic Party aside, all of our disappointment on things that we have yet to do, all of our pettiness, all of our whining, put aside and come together united with a one last effort to make sure that Mitch McConnell doesn't become the Senate Majority Leader and Nancy Pelosi can return. Because if Mitch becomes Senate Majority Leader, I can promise you any future appointment by Joe Biden to the Supreme Court will be halted by Mitch McConnell. So if we want to have a chance to build back slowly on this court, he must no longer be Majority Leader. And we have to deal with the issue of filibuster. Now, that's an easy thing to do. And that is required that we do it. Stop criticizing each other. Stop telling me or someone else how not perfect I am. And I will do the same. Because the fact of the matter is, marriage is next, contraceptiveness is next, uh, sodomy laws are next. And don't even for a second say they'll never do it. We've learned that they'll do it. In fact, they were very open in these decisions that they're doing. Now, the second one is a more difficult issue because it calls for dramatic reform in how America is constructed politically and, and for our government. It will never get through as a constitutional amendment, so we'll have to figure out a way to do it. But I believe deeply, as this country becomes more divided between red and blue, that this will be a source of great displeasure and division, and probably in the end, in the near future, mean the end of American democracy, and Mary, maybe uh, our country will divide into two or three countries. I think that is as like 50-50 right now as anything. Because here's why. You know, Wyoming gets two senators. California gets two senators. And they vote on the Supreme Court justices. Now, for the first time in history, when Gorge was selected for the Supreme Court, they came from states not representing a majority of the people. And the same thing happened with Kavanaugh. Only 40% of the people came from states uh, that uh, voted against Kavanaugh. For the first time in history, two Supreme Court justices were selected by less than a majority from people in the states. California with its two senators, Wyoming with its two senators. Wyoming's vote with 530, say 600,000 people now, has 70 times more the power of a vote in New York or California or Illinois. So their vote for Kavanaugh, the two senators, and for uh, uh, Clarence Thomas or whoever, that, that dictate to us how we should live from when we get up in the morning into when we go to bed, how we what we can do and what we can say and who we are and how we control our bodies. These people who historically says, I want government out of my lives, 
they're in our life like I've never seen government be in our life. So we've got a great injustice in the sense that my vote in New York for Supreme Court justices are 70 times less powerful than Wyoming. That's got to change. And not only do they have the ability as a minority with those two senators in, in Utah, South Dakota, North Dakota, Montana, Alaska, it sets up a system of minority rule of where perhaps as little as 35 to 40 percent of the people can dictate the policy of the entire nation. And to make uh, insult worse, New York's money and California's money is flowing to these states in subsidies and uh, uh, social programs. We're financing Kentucky and South Dakota and Wyoming. So they're taking my tax dollars to give to people who are telling me how I have to live my life and who are the ones deciding who's going to be a Supreme Court justice and whether we have a filibuster or not. The fact of the matter is, if we would have done this on a proportional basis, uh, both of those Supreme Court nominations, if they had represented the populations of the United States, we would have had 30 million more votes uh, and weighted such in senators. Uh, I got to say, uh, the Republicans are equal in power in the Senate who have power or staying in power because of it represent only 14% of the people of the country if you take those states. Los Angeles County, the New York greater metropolitan area, has more people listen carefully, than 40 other states combined, not combined. Manhattan and Los Angeles County, greater New York metropolitan area, has more people than 40 states. Only 10 states have more population than those areas. And we get two senators, two senators from New York, two senators from California, Now, we have to have a constitutional amendment correcting that. If we can have a unicameral legislature or we can do a weighted system of, uh, you know, like just at the most the state can have a six senators and based on population, you could have as little as one, but you could have as many as two, three, four, five, or six based on population so that we have equal representation in the Senate of the United States and not the large house uh, of 435. The other option that we can do in the soon, when the constitution was written and we had nine justices, they represented the nine different court branches. Well, we have 13 branches now. We should expand the Supreme Court based on to how many district courts. We should expand to 13 or 15 to deal with the change and shift in population. And it should be a majority confirmation of these people. Now, the third one is sort of a humorous one, but I only say it half humorously. Let's take Wyoming. They have 280,000 registered voters. South Dakota has only 902,000 registered voters and North Dakota has 774 voters and Montana a little over a million. Now here's my proposal. We spend billions on these races from states that are small and will not represent our values and our hopes and our dreams and our, the dreamers and uh, LGBTQ plus people and women and uh, all of their immigrants and uh, all of our minorities. Their job, as they see it, is to take away our rights. And that's just pure and simple. So instead of billions and billions of dollars wasted trying to hold on to power, when we can't, it's stacked against us. It is stacked against us. And every once in a while, we'll break through in one of those states, but then six years later, we lose them. 
I suggest that we take that big, big pool of money and that we find 250,000 people to move to Wyoming, uh, 500,000 to North Dakota, uh, 500,000 to South Dakota, and 500,000 to Montana. And that we set up industries that they can support, that we offer free housing like the old homesteader acts, free land and 40 acres and a mule. It's cheaper. Set up jobs and industries in those states, move people out, pay them to move, give them incentives to move. And if we did, we'd have two senators in Montana, two senators in Wyoming, two senators in South Dakota, and two senators in North Dakota. We could pick up six to eight senators and never have to spend that kind of huge money again to gain our right to freedom and equal representation. Not a bad idea. Do job training programs, build housing, uh, give them open space. People who would do anything to have that kind of life and give them training and create uh, communities that are uh, like Roosevelt did and others did that give hope, give dreams, home ownership, and help resolve the problem of the inequality in our life. Now, I don't know how I can say this, but hopefully in November we can set things straight, that we can get pick up three or four senators and keep control of the House. If Mitch McConnell is majority leader and they take the House and nothing gets done in this country, climate change, immigration, human rights, voter rights, uh, I don't see much hope beyond that. They'll so entrench themselves that we'll never make the reforms to our institution and to our constitution possible. Now, our constitution is hard to change as it is already. But we've got to look at it. And of course, the final proposal is a difficult one. As Rodney King, they said, can't we all get along? Well, the answer might be no, we can't get along. That my values and principles are so different than the narrow-minded, faith-based uh, values of people who want to tell me how to live every aspect of my life. And maybe it's time for America to embrace Texas' will to succeed from the Union. They bought and create our own countries with our values and, and where we all have equal representation, and diversity and creativity and freedom of speech and not hatred and people being beaten up in the streets. So I'm trying to give you on this birthday of our country, I hope it's not our last birthday, but I think right now, my friends, anything's on the table. Have a wonderful holiday. Please subscribe. Please hit that subscribe button. Uh, I need you. We're only four away from 200. I need five subscribe buttons. And if you get a chance, uh, check my Facebook and uh, check out Patreon. Because I could use your help financially with this blog. Uh, happy 4th. Peace.